welcome to another video. <clears throat> so, this is the launch of Apollo 10. And um, the, in this mission, they went to the moon and they tested the... They basically did the full moon landing except the actual landing. <laughs> so the launch for this is pretty much the same as the other Saturn V launches. And... Yeah, so... <laughs> I'll just fly this up and then get into orbit and it'll be the same pretty much. So we're coming up on the stage separation and I made sure just to quick save this because sometimes stuff can blow up with the launch escape system. <laughs> successful stage separation. So we're going at 500 meters per second now, and 600, and 17, or 18 kilometers above the sky, and Seco in stage separation. Now, the RCS things with the stage separation, those are supposed to represent when the Saturn V and some other rockets, when they did their stage separation, to get the fuel to be back in the bottom of the tank so they could use it. They had to use solid rocket motors to make the stage go forward. And that's what those are supposed to be. And we're going to do our apoapsis burn. The Russians are, yeah, they still do this when they do their stage separations. Instead of using the solid rocket motors, they start burning the engine before the engine on the stage below it is out. That's why they kind of have like a grid type structure below each stage. So the exhaust goes out that and doesn't like burn up the stage below it and blow it up. <laughs> so we're burning in our window right now. Translunar injection. <coughs> and what we're doing right now is the moon is on a much higher orbit than we were. So we have to burn at our window because that'll that's the correct place to burn. And then we raise our apoapsis, which is the highest point in our orbit, to go into the moon's sphere of influence. Then we can lower it so we can get into a good lunar orbit. The reason I'm burning into the moon is because what they did for Apollo missions they did the same thing kind of with the lunar module when they didn't need it, but they would just crash the S4B third stage into the moon to get rid of it. <laughs> I think they did it for like Apollo's 11 through, th or like 13 through 17 or something. But this, this one I'll just crash it just to get rid of it. And like, in the ones before then, and they got it like in orbit around the sun. <laughs> Some of them are actually still over in orbit <laughs> around the sun. So we're doing our docking procedures now. <laughs> We just have to go in and dock with the lunar module. <laughs> there we go. We're going to do a quick fuel transfer there, even though they didn't do that. <laughs> Now we're going 
do a mid-course correction burn to fix our trajectory around the moon so we don't crash into it. <laughs> So I kind of messed up that burn a bit, but we'll be, but it'll still be good because we're going to turn around and do it a different way. There we go. That's a good one. So we time warp. We're in the moon sphere of influence, and we need to get into lunar orbit insertion, which is where we burn, we point our engine the way we're going, which is called retrograde. So we're pointing retrograde, and then we burn our engine to get us in lunar orbit. See, now we're in lunar orbit, and we just need to circularize, which is what we'll do in a second. So we're doing our circularization burn. So see now we're in a circular orbit. <laughs> and we're, two of our astronauts are now in the lunar module and we're in docking with that and they're gonna go and pretty much do the lunar landing except they won't land. Cause this is kind of, what Apollo 9 did is they just basically did the lunar landing but they did not land. But they did go down to an altitude of 15.6 kilometers. And that's the altitude where they would switch over to kind of like a landing. But like, where if you went below that, you, you kind of like couldn't go back, I think. But it's kind of like to simulate the lunar landing. <laughs> All this had to go right for the, for the, or for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to land on the moon just like a few months later. <laughs> So we're attaching to our ascent stage right now, or in a second. <laughs> and then, here we go, and we're going to turn our ascent stage engine on. Uh, if you're wondering what the stuff is on my map, the, um, the, like, probably wouldn't have been there when they actually did this mission. I have a base on the moon and some space stations, and then I also have, I made it as a joke, it was like a challenge from one of my friends, their channel's The Golden Fish Shop, if you want to go subscribe to them. But he challenged me to build a city on the moon. And so I assembled it in low Earth orbit, it took a while. And then I flew it all the way to the moon and landed it, which that took forever. And when I finally did the landing, it was like one frame per minute. And it was really laggy. I can, I can post the video of that later if you guys want me to. <laughs> but um, I called it the city of England because of Nick Crompton's favorite line, England is my city. <laughs> Just as kind of like a joke. <laughs> so we just got our um, close encounter even closer so we can dock <laughs> and do our rendezvous. And we're just 
watching for it in our screen. And there it is, and so we'll burn towards it. If you're wondering why I have the throttle down to like 60%, it's because the ion engines, I wish I could put them at um, 100% because they're not very powerful, but the power, it'll go down really quickly. And with ion engines, you need fuel and power. They're really efficient with fuel, but not with power. So we're just trying not to waste electricity. <laughs> and we did our rendezvous. You know, it's spelled like Rendez of House. I wonder why. But it's pronounced Rendezvous. <laughs> and then we're going to burn away from our target so we don't crash into it. Or so we can get closer to it. <laughs> so we just need to get in closer and line up those docking ports and then we can go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they would dock up I probably mentioned this in the last video but they would sit at like or the pilot who's in the command module right now he would sit in the left seat and line it up with the lunar module and the commander in the lunar pilot or in the lunar module pilot would be in the lunar module trying to dock too. There we go, we're docked. So we transfer our astronauts back to the command module and then we crash the lunar module into the moon. <laughs> the first moon crash. <laughs> so we just have to lower our periapsis just a bit just so it hits the moon. You know, they also use these and later lun lunar landing missions, they put seismometers, I think is what they're called, on the moon. And they, one of the reasons why they crashed the S-4B and the lunar module into the moon is for science. <laughs> they would measure the, um, what effect it had on the moon's surface, like how the lunar, like how stuff vibrated on the lunar surface, kind of, because of the crashes. So we're doing our trans-Earth injection to get back to Earth, trying to make our entry not too steep, but not too shallow, and I appear to have made it a bit too steep. We, if we did that, we'd just fly right into the Earth. <laughs> there we go. And that's a good re-entry. You want to get as much of the atmosphere as you can so you can slow down enough. We're going to try not to time warp into the Earth. and separation of the command module from the service module and re-entry in real life it would not spin around like this capsules in real life are made to be their aerodynamics so they always point heat shield first when they're in the atmosphere which is pretty cool but since this capsule is not really a capsule, it's just a probe core and a stage separator and a parachute, pretty much, <laughs> then it doesn't have that effect on it. So we're going to come in and deploy our parachute. Oh, um, 
If you're wondering why they have the orange and white parachutes, <laughs> I actually learned this myself like a few months ago, but I was launching like one of those Estes rockets and it landed in a nearby farm, like that field, just right next to our neighborhood. And we went and got it, but if it hadn't had that orange and white parachute, we would have never been able to see it. So if, they, if you're wondering why they have those, it's so you can see it really well. <laughs> so they can find it. So we're just about to land. And splash down. <laughs> and here are the blueprints, or the blueprints for the different stages. You're gonna have to assemble them with zero gravity and unbreakable parts and stuff. And here are some pictures of the crew and the lunar ascent stage from the moon and the view of the command service module from the lunar ascent stage. Don't forget to subscribe to PewDiePie and like and subscribe.